how are you doing today? I'm attempting to clean my office, this area here. This whole desk thing actually like came with the apartment. This was like the selling point. This is why we moved here. But it's just become a dumping ground for all my stuff lately, so I'm trying to clean it. I have this big stack of books, some that I've read, some that I am reading, some that just came in that I'm about to read, and I was about to put them away, but then I was like, hey, I should just do a little book chat about all of these books. This is the first year that I've been teaching that I haven't also been in a master's program. My master's took me five years. So um, in the past, I always felt guilty about reading for pleasure just because I had at least a book a week that I always had to get read. Plus I needed to be doing research. And so anytime that I would read something just for fun, it felt like I was wasting time and brain cells and like space in my memory, space in my brain. So I've been kind of making up for lost time. So I've got a big old stack right here that I thought I would share with you. These are in no particular order. This is just the stack. Um, this is called Towers Falling by Jewel Parker Rhodes. This is just from our school's library. Um, I take my Title I kids there every week. And sometimes I just grab one just so that I could, you know, recommend it sometime. Not sure about this one yet. It starts off really terribly. Like the author's voice is really weird. It's supposed to be in like, modern day New York, but it sounded like Little House on the Prairie or something. I was like, what is going on? Found out later that the mom is like Jamaican, so maybe that's why, but if I were a middle schooler, I would read the first couple pages and then just return this, but I'm sticking it out. I've read about a fourth of it. I think the idea of this book is that um, it's about this girl, Deja. She's like in fifth grade. She's at a new school. Um, she's homeless. They're living in a shelter and her dad is out of work and he's always like angry and stuff and they're gonna learn about 9-11. And it seems like they don't really understand 9-11, much like my students. Um, and I think it's gonna turn out that her dad was in the buildings at that time, or maybe he was like a police officer or a firefighter or something like that. And he is probably dealing with like chronic health issues and mental issues as a result. And then like, that's why they're homeless. So I think it's all gonna come together in the end. So I'm sticking with it, but uh, yeah, it gets off to a rocky start, but, um, I feel like this is a good perspective though for students like mine who like we're at the age where we lived through this so we understand but they didn't and so it's that's such a weird thing to me but they like don't really get what happened so um, yeah I'm hoping to be able to recommend this to students like next September. <sighs> this next one. Uh, I did finish reading. This is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This was one that um, someone had recommended to me that I bought for my classroom library and um, my aide in that Title I class actually borrowed it and read it and she came back after the weekend. She was like, this book is so good. You have to read it. So I read it and it is incredible. This is one of my like top 10 favorite books of all time. If you were a Harry Potter fan, but you've already read all the Harry Potter stuff, this will kind of like fill your void. It's just so magical and so beautiful. The description is incredible. You feel like you have been to the night circus. I love it. Um, I won't give too much away. Plus, it's just hard to describe. You just have to read it. Um, but I looked into it and Summit Entertainment bought the rights to this book thank God, um, but they haven't started making a movie. They haven't started any production, but I really hope that they turn this into a movie because it would be so incredible and some entertainment would be like the people to do this one. So oh, I love it and I hope it becomes a movie. The next one is Unashamed by Christine Kane and I haven't read this yet. It just came in. Um, I love Christine Kane as a speaker. I've heard her speak a couple of times. She has a lot of videos like on YouTube. She's a pastor, more of a speaker, I guess, than a pastor. Um, but she also runs the A21 campaign, which is one of the organizations that December raised money for. And it's not January 31st yet, so if you haven't donated to December yet, there's still time. We're trying to get to $2 million, and we are so close. We're like 1.9 something million. So anyway, um, she's involved in that. And I, I just liked the description on the back. Part of it says, in Unashamed, Christine Kane reveals the oft-hidden consequences of shame in her own life and in the lives of so many women and invites you to join her in moving from a shame-filled life to a shame-free life. Um, it kind of reminds me of that TED Talk by Brene Brown that has become really popular and circulated a lot. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to reading this book. One of my friends recommended it and said it was like life-changing, so I can't wait to read it. This one I've mentioned on my channel before. This is Run Share Now's 
Alexander Hamilton. This is what Lin-Manuel Miranda was reading on vacation when he was inspired to do a mixtape about Alexander Hamilton, which has now become a smash hit Broadway musical and the obsession of my life. So um, I haven't made a very big dent in this because it's really, really long, but so far I love it. I love how Ron Chernow writes. Very well researched as a historian. I put my stamp of approval on this. Jensen is talking to the TV. <laughs> baby TV, man. I'm like obsessed with baby TV. I kind of love it way more than he does. He's not that interested, but I am. Anyway, this one is so, so good, and I can't wait until I am done with it, <laughs> but um, I think this is going to be one of my favorite history books. Uh, the next one is by uh, another speaker that I heard and loved, by Horacio Sanchez. It's called A Brain-Based Approach to Closing the Achievement Gap. Now, I heard him speak, love him. I looked for more of his stuff on like YouTube, but since he wants you to pay to have him come and speak at your district or your school. There's not a lot on YouTube. So I was like, okay, well, I just want like a book then to kind of reference from time to time. If I had only seen the cover of this book, I would never buy it. Whoever like produced this, published this for him, did a terrible job. There's like a super angry white kid up here glaring down at a, for some reason, naked or shirtless black kid. I don't understand why he doesn't get a shirt and he does. I think he is also in like the bottom part of the achievement gap because he must have like emotional problems. Even like Horacio Sanchez's picture is from like 1995. It's like a grainy old picture. So don't judge this by its cover because the cover sucks, but his ideas are amazing. If you work in a school where like you are affected by this achievement gap, maybe your kids live in poverty or their parents never had a lot a lot of opportunities or they have really unstable households or things like that those things prevent them from being able to behave and being able to learn and being able to like function in a school society and it's down to the molecular level of the brain and so this is a really important thing to understand i would like to rebrand it for them so Horacio sanchez if you ever see this let's talk because this was not done well <laughs> but i love you i love you yeah and some bookmarks that I made from a calendar. The next one a lot of people have read is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me and Other Concerns by Mindy Kaling. This is just a really fun one to read. I love Mindy Kaling. I love The Mindy Project. I loved her on The Office. Whatever the other book was that she read, I can't remember the title of it right now, but that one was super funny. Um, I read this a while ago, and this is one of those where if you're reading it in public, you might have like an embarrassing laugh out loud moment because it's that funny. Okay, I think Jensen's gonna join us for the rest of this video. Say hello! Anyway, I had <laughs> underlined a part in this book that I thought was so funny, and I still do. There's a huge overlap between people who are good at frisbee and people who do Teach for America. The same instinct to make at-risk kids learn, which I admire so much, becomes deadly when turned on friends trying to relax on a Sunday afternoon in the park. I remember taking a picture of that line and texting it to my friend who does Teach for America in New Jersey, so super funny. Good for just like a enjoy yourself type of read. The next one is Brooklyn, which they did a movie on maybe like a year ago, and so I had read it um, trying to, you know, read it before the, the movie came out, but I never did see the movie. I should look it up and see if it's out now and available. I liked it because it was like a different take on an immigrant story, a, a different take on like the Irish immigration story. It doesn't take place during like the potato famine. It's during like the 1930s, I believe. Um, and the story is really well written. Ouch. Oh. And it has this really interesting theme of you know, should you stay where you're from and where your family is, even if there aren't a lot of opportunities for you there, or should you leave behind everybody you love and go out and start your own life somewhere where there are more opportunities? And I think even today, ow, ow, Jensen, oh, this video is taking a turn for the worst. Okay, ow, oh my gosh, it's getting much more difficult to film with him. Anyways, uh, yes, that theme of, you know, should you leave your family and move on somewhere else bigger and better or, or not, I think that's a, feel, uh, a theme that still affects people today. It's something me and my husband think about a lot. So, yeah, it's, it's a really good book. I recommend it. Ew, there's slobber in my hair. Gross. Your hair falls out already and then they try and take 
what is left. Anyway, the next book is this one. This is Bloom by Estée yeah. Lalonde. She is a YouTuber, and then this is like kind of a memoir. Um, this is Navigating Life in Style. So it is a lot about style. Um, she, she has really great like home style. I love her apartment and her videos and stuff. I like her clothing. She just has really has her own cool sense of personal style. This has really cute stories about how like when she was younger, um, just like trying so desperately to fit in with the cool kids. I think we can all relate to that. It's like really sweet but sad stories about her as a little kid. Um, and then just kind of coming into her own and being more self-confident. Um, I read the book and then thought my friend would really like it, so I gave it to my friend. And then I saw that she was doing, Estee was doing, a book signing in LA. And she lives in London, so this was kind of weird. So um, it was like the next day. But Jensen and I went to the book signing and we were one of the first 150 people. So we got a new book and she signed it for us. We got to meet her and take a picture with her. And so our book says, to Megan and Jensen, love Estee, and that was just really cool to get to meet her. I love her. So I highly recommend the book. I definitely recommend her YouTube channel as well. She's just a really cool person. The next one is All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. This is another one that you guys recommended that um, I got from my classroom library. This is one that is too mature for my sixth grade students, but I loved it. Um, it's about these kids named Finch and Violet. They're like seniors in high school and they both are going through really hard stuff. Violet has been through a tragedy. Finch is bipolar and they're just trying to be a support system for each other. Um, one thing that I really like about it is that you know, it, it goes back and forth. The, the different chapters go back and forth between the two perspectives. So sometimes you see Finch's perspective, sometimes you see Violet's. And I think that that's a really useful <laughs> writing technique in developing compassion and empathy in readers. And that is one of the great side effects of reading stories and reading novels. So when you're seeing things from Violet's perspective and Finch kind of, you know, goes off the grid for weeks at a time, it's so hard on her and you feel so bad for her and you're like, come on Finch, like you need to be there for her and like reach out and you can't just disappear like this. But then when you go over to a Finch chapter and you see it from his perspective, like, he can't. He can't be there for anybody. He's just trapped in this pain of depression. And so it really helps you be able to see things from both sides. And so I just love that in a book. And I think this is an important book for like high school aged people to read and, and older than that. But um, it's really good. It's really heartbreaking. But I think it's an important book. Okay, the last one, because my battery is dying, is uh, Bad Girls Throughout History. The art in this book is in incredible let's see Florence Nightingale is right here gives you a little history about the women and then just gorgeous gorgeous pictures got this from Amazon um, this is just a great one to have on your shelf I love it I think my battery is almost dead so goodbye from me and Jensen we will see you in our next video bye